Hi guys. Imagine that. It is snowing again here in the end times. Snowing again in mid-November. Good God, it is Friday, November 18th, 2022, and uh, <laughs> sitting here for how many days in a row in the seven foot by seven foot tiny house getting a little, a little bit of cabin fever <coughs> here on these snowy days. The snowbird trapped in his tiny house. So anyway, of course, to pass the time in my... Uh, whatever they call this life. I uh, obviously been over there on Netflix, binging on Netflix. And uh, I made it on a four hour binge yesterday. They, I don't, I guess this is a fairly new series or I'm just hearing about it. A, uh, this is an eight part series, eight 30 minute segments of so four hours of binging on the name of this documentary is Ancient Apocalypse. Ancient Apocalypse. And what it is is a documentary starring uh, not quite the hero he used to be. When I first started going down this rabbit hole, when I got, you know, when I first got red pilled about 14 years ago and discovered the works of Graham Hancock. Graham Hancock who is not an archaeologist, who is not an astronomer. Uh, the guy is a journalist. He is a tr an educated and trained journalist. So anyway, I'm sure you, you've heard of this guy. So if you're a fan of Graham, Graham Hancock, or even if you're not, uh, I will... I'm going to give uh, Ancient Apocalypse, I I'm going to give it maybe one and a half thumbs up uh, <laughs> here on this series in Netflix. Uh, and uh, I, I just want to state for the record, just because I'm recommending you watch this, does not mean that I endorse every word that Graham Hancock has to say about anything, okay? Uh, I am not endorsing every one of the controversial ideas of Graham Hancock, but at the same time, I do not throw the baby out with the bathwater because I think that some of his ideas and shit that he presents as just complete horseshit he presents as evidence of uh, the ancient apocalypse known as, usually as the Great Flood, you know, Noah's Flood, the Great Flood, the drowning of Atlantis, uh, you know, the flood myth that goes through so many of these uh, all different cultures and religions talking about some form of great ancient flood that wiped out pretty much everything uh, in, in ancient history. And uh, Graham Hancock, um, his latest foray, although it's always been throughout his works, he's just been building towards this four-hour Netflix documentary. Basically what Graham Hancock sets out to prove, uh, or maybe prove is a strong word, he is throwing out the fascinating hypothesis that, that, that has several levels of depth. First he's just trying to prove it. I'm okay with this. He has proved to my satisfaction that the great flood, whatever you want to call this, was in fact a historical event. Uh, this, it, it, it's just, there's too much evidence there uh, that this was a historical event. Now I'm going to give a little bit of a spoiler alert. I mean, I don't mind, I don't really expect anyone listening to this to watch this, but if you don't want a 
a spoiler than to shut me off now and go watch it because he builds up to this uh, in the documentary just as he's been building up to it over the last 30 years in, in the various books he's written. Um, so the, the main evidence he has now is we have strong scientific evidence that you've probably heard of the Younger Dias period, the mini ice age, the mini ice age that we had on this planet from like, uh, well, I mean, I think 12,000, between 12,600 and 11,800 years ago, roughly in there, that about, that we had a little mini ice age. Uh, and this seems to be, there is good evidence that a comet or an asteroid, spoiler alert, what you're going to hear in the last episode, what he is claiming is actually when Earth passed through the torrid, the, you know, the torrids, the meteor shower. 12,800 years ago, I guess we just hit a particularly rough patch and uh, something slammed in to the earth and you know, this is the main uh, piece of evidence for people who promote the, 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 the quote climate change hypothesis, you know, for the megafauna, for the uh, sudden and rapid extinction of the, uh, you know, the what's now the North American megafauna, which I have blamed virtually 100% on humans, the overkill hypothesis. But what it is, what Graham Hancock uh, is claiming he does not agree with me on the overkill hypothesis. He is one of the people who is claiming what caused those megafaunal extinctions uh, was the Earth getting slammed, comet, asteroids, meteor, shower, uh, whatever you want to call it, 12,800 years ago. But when this thing happened, it was an ancient apocalypse. So the bottom line, what, uh, so he's, he, first he's trying just to prove that, that, that it really did happen. And, and, and I am convinced enough to generally agree with him. Uh, I'm not quite ready to absolve humans, the noble savages, from the overkill hypothesis. Uh, but other than that, I am convinced that something happened uh, to set off this ancient apocalypse about 12,800 years ago. So that part I'm okay with. And so then the next level that he's trying to prove in this documentary, so each, you know, each time he digs a little deeper in the well, uh, it, it gets his arguments and evidence get a, a little shakier, obviously. So the next level is, he wants to show, I'm sure we've all heard of Atlantis, uh, and which is kind of an oversimplification, but whatever you want to call it, he firmly believes that before the younger Dryas, that humans, that there was a global, I mean a planet-wide advanced civilization, an, an advanced technological civilization. I mean, not quite where we are today. You know, he's, he's not claiming uh, that, you know, he's not claiming it is quite where we are today, but I'm guessing maybe he was claiming where we were. He never says this, but I get the idea he's talking about maybe where the planet was in about 1500, maybe, time when Columbus was sailing around the world that, call it now, let's call it 13,000 years ago, just to make a sum of that, 13,000 years ago, 
that civilization on this planet was about where I'm thinking he's suggesting about when Columbus was sailing the ocean blue. And uh, so then he, so that's part two, and he's, uh, you know, getting all of his evidence together. And, and of course, Graham Hancock has a bunch of books. It's not easy to read a Graham Hancock book, okay, guys? It is a serious, I, I have read at least until his book that he wrote in like 2016 about go uh, I never can't pronounce that place in Turkey, Gobekli Tepe or whatever it's called. Uh, it was the last Graham Hancock book that I read. I read every word of that goddamn book. I read, I read every word that Graham Hancock ever wrote up through that book. I don't even know if he's written a book since then. Now, I have not read his fiction, but I've read all of his nonfiction um, right up through that book. And it, it's a lot of work uh, in trying to distill 30 years of work into, even if it's four hours of a Netflix documentary, obviously, uh, it's barely scratching the surface. But, uh, so, but that's what he's, that, that's level two of what he's trying to prove and has been trying to prove for 30 years that quote, Atlantis was real. And again, I put Atlantis in quotes as I'm, I, as I'm pretty sure uh, as he would. It's just a catchphrase for an advanced, a technologically advanced global civilization that was destroyed in the Great Flood. And then it, he goes a next step, a third step, a, a, as if uh, <laughs> if he is not already enraged every mainstream archaeologist and, uh, and historian, uh, ancient historian uh, on the planet. Uh, he then says that there were a few survivors of that could be as few as like seven people. Well, I, it's probably more people survived, but, but somehow there was this group of seven guys. They seem to all have beards. They seem to be honkies with beards. That, that seems to be a recurring theme. They, they seem to be honkies with beards who traveled in boats. And after, you know, the ancient civilization collapsed due to this, uh, this comet or this meteor belt or the torrids or whatever it was, uh, that these emissaries spread out around the world, allegedly in boats, uh, and rekindled civilization, uh, cranking up civilization and, 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 and getting humanity back on track to end up with the mess we've made out of the planet. Now there is a fourth one, and I'm really doing a spoiler alert in this, and, and, he, and, 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 and then his farthest shark jumping which comes in at the very, very end is he is saying the earth is imminently ready to pass through the same section of the torrid meteor shower that we passed through uh, 13,000 years ago and that any time in, in the next few years or decades, we could have a, uh, another one of these collisions with the Taurids. That, that it, it, when do we go through the Taurids? Is that in December? What month are the Taurids? I, I, I get all these mixed up. Taurus. Anyway, it's not the same month as Taurus. But anyway, uh, so look out for the Taurids. 
but but anyway, so guys, I don't know. It, it, it is a very interesting theory. It, it, at least it's fun, but the there. Uh, you know, to, to, to watch his, uh, I, I, to watch his evidence, you know, getting more and more desperate. And, and I do have to call out as much as I love and respect, uh, Graham Hancock, I've got to call out one of the episodes that talks about, have you ever heard of the Bimini Road? The Bimini Road, which is off the coast of the Bahamas, what it plainly is, to me, is a bunch of naturally produced big rocks lying in a straight line off the coast of the Bahamas. I see nothing. I do not see one iota of evidence that Graham Hancock or anybody else has ever presented to me that the Bimini Road was uh, an ancient, uh, you know, one of these giant uh, stone uh, structures created by humans. Absolutely not, not one iota of evidence. It, it's a bunch of goddamn rocks lying on uh, the bottom of the ocean. I, I really wish he had not damaged his credibility by uh, spending so much time on that unadulterated horseshit, but uh, 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 that was the that was the single worst uh, flaw, and you and, and you have to question somebody obviously as brilliant as Graham Hancock looking at a bunch of rocks on the bottom of the ocean, claiming they were a road built by humans more than 13,000 years ago is bullshit. And it's very hard not to turn off your computer uh, and, and, and throw everything that Graham Hancock has to say out the window. But the bottom line with Graham Hancock uh, is, you know, he is the arch enemy, arch enemy of these mainstream archaeologists and for that, uh, I, I fully, fully support the man that he is hitting the bullshit detected button on, uh, on so much of the, the you know, the, the mainstream archaeologist cover story. It's unadulterated horseshit. Now, Graham Hancock has not convinced me that his ideas are any less bullshit than, you know, the mainstream, you know, the shit rammed down our throats in school. Uh, it, it, however, uh, anybody believe in that shit? I, you know, I haven't believed uh, th th these mainstream uh, archaeological uh, accounts of things. You know, I mean, I was 12 years old and, 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 and looking at like, this just doesn't fucking sound right to me. And you better believe that Graham Hancock is public enemy number one. Anybody uh, dare questioning. Uh, you know, he is a journalist who sees some, I, I mean, some major, serious, obvious flaws in, in, in this bullshit myth that these mainstream archaeologists ha have conjured. Uh, and he simply wants to, you know, get answers to these questions. Well, the, these mainstream archaeologists sure as shit aren't going to answer his questions. But, but you know, their story is, is, is to me, even more bullshit uh, than uh, I would have an easier time believing Graham Hancock's theory uh, than, the, than these uh, mainstream archaeologists. And, uh, and, of course, and good for him, one of his episodes was, you know, was talking about 
the, these Native Americans, which is the first wave of Asian invaders uh, in the Western Hemisphere. Uh, he doesn't buy uh, that fucking land bridge, uh, bearing straight land bridge bullshit cover story for one minute any more than I do. Now, he's not saying, and I'm not saying, now, that did happen. I mean, a bunch of Asians did come invading uh, what's now uh, the Americas over that land bridge, you know, about 13,000 years ago, probably during the mini ice age during the younger Dryas is when they took advantage of it to come over here. I, I'm not saying that did not happen. And, and I've never heard Graham Hancock, Graham Hancock deny that that did happen. However, when they got here, there had been people here uh, you know, he was throwing out a hundred thousand years. You know, Don Juan Matus and Carlos Castaneda back in the 1960s. Don Juan Matus w was saying that we've been here for a hundred thousand years, and there, there's some evidence. It's fairly weak. He just barely mentioned it, where they have some evidence of humans being here in what's now the United States 130,000 years ago, 130,000 years ago. Uh, but it's clear, it's absolutely clear that he was pointing out where, where there's evidence that humans have been here, what is it, 22,000 years. Uh, you know, for almost 10 thousand years that uh, humans had, had been here uh, before those guys ever came over that land bridge. Now, he didn't talk about it, but it was implied in there where they came from was from the south. They did not come from the north. They came over, this is just me, what I've been putting together over the last 50 years, they came over on boats. They landed somewhere along the coast of South America. I'm figuring probably Peru, uh, that, the, that the first Asian invaders uh, probably washed up on the beach in Peru. Uh, and, and I have no problem uh, with it being 100,000 years ago. And they spread, they spread north and east. You know, the Amazon Indians. Uh, these Amazon Indians did not come across that goddamn uh, Alaskan, uh, across that Bering Strait land bridge. Didn't happen. Okay? Uh, back when the Amazon uh, was a much bigger civilization. I'm not going to get into this. I would love to ask Graham Hancock what he thinks, what I think, and I can't remember whose theory this is. I've mentioned this before. What I think those naked savages down in the Amazon rainforest, what they are, are the survivors of a collapsed civilization. Uh, this is what it's going to look like. If you want to see what all of us are going to look like after civilization collapses, it's those guys, it's those Amazon Indians. They are the survivors of the civilization that was probably mostly wiped out uh, by smallpox. But uh, these guys, they started in South America. They, uh, you know, they were mound builders. They were various, they, they built large earthen structures, which you do not see with the guys coming in from Alaska, living in teepees and shit. And, uh, you know, he was showing all of these mounds, these giant, they were the, the mound building culture. 
where the hell do you think corn came from? It didn't come from Alaska. It, it came from uh, Latin America. It, it's where corn and I'm pretty sure potatoes, didn't they come from Peru? Uh, you know, there were mountains, that there's mounds there. There, I was seeing mounds in uh, in Saint Croix. The mound builders were in Saint Croix in the in the damn Virgin Islands. They were all over Florida. There's there's Indian mounds all over the state of Florida. They, and Graham was uh, visiting these big mounds in Louisiana, Georgia. He spent most of his time up there in. Um, in uh, Ohio with this giant mound. Uh, these mound builders uh, had been here for hundreds and I would say thousands and thousands of years before the second wave ever came. But, you bet, uh, but, but archaeologists, you know, they're still going to stick with this bullshit story. You know, when the, when the fucking pilgrims got here, I mean, this is where, uh, you know, I was thinking, as I said, when I was 12 years old, when the pilgrims got here, what did Pocahontas teach you how to grow corn? Where, where the fuck uh, did, these, uh, did, did these people uh, coming from Alaska get corn from? Where do you think the corn came from? The corn and the potatoes and the squash. It had been here uh, for centuries. It had been here for millennia uh, by, by the time those newbies came across that land bridge. So anyway, uh, good for Graham Hancock for just telling those uh, mainstream archaeologists to go fuck themselves. You know, just go, just go fuck yourself is, uh, is, is what he's saying. And uh, just for that, uh, Graham Hancock is one of my heroes. But anyway, I highly recommend uh, Ancient Apocalypse featuring Graham Hancock on Netflix. Uh, tell me what you think of the guy, but I have to go find something else to binge on on Netflix while I still can. Bye, guys. Ugh. God, look at this shit. Look at this shit. Man, we could be in Buffalo, New York right now. Good fucking God. Have you seen Buffalo, New York? We're so fucked. Bye, guys.